Hilak is a luck. Hey guys, it's Midnight Philosopher, and welcome back to part two of my guide on how to pick your very first medico biaxial. Let's start off by raking these pins to randomize the order. And the first thing we will do is pick it counterclockwise. When picking counterclockwise, it's important to keep in mind that the sidebar binds first. So these pins will actually bind before they are set to the shear because uh, unless they are rotated properly because of the fact that that sidebar binds first. So got to try to go through these pins and we can actually feel if they're rotated properly before we even try to lift them to the shear line. When they are rotated properly, you'll get a little bit of a false set. That way you know that you've gotten all the pins rotated the correct orientation. Pulling on the left side of uh, of these pins in order to turn them counterclockwise and then pulling on the right side of the pin in order to try to rotate them clockwise. I don't want to put too much pressure on these pins because if I do, then it will prevent them from being able to rotate out of the false gates if they are stuck in any of them. I did feel a slight rotation on the core there, and I think that may mean that pins might be set already rotationally, but we can always go back after we start setting them just to be sure. I got a little click on six there, Five feels pretty stiff. Four gave me a little click. Three, not too much. I'm gonna go back. I feel like uh, I dropped some pins there. So six. Five again feels good. Four. Three. Might have gotten a little click from him there. One is a little bit binding, not really. Oh, and I just touched six and it opened up the lock. Just like that. So rotating them beforehand did really help that out. Now I'm gonna lock it back up. I'm gonna rake it back up again one more time. And this time, I'm gonna go clockwise. So when I'm picking clockwise, the same thing except the difference is that these pins don't bind uh, when they're not rotated properly until after they are set to shear. So, uh, a different feel that they give you and this is actually what I got used to learning the lock first. So I, I can always just go back through the pins one more time as I try to set them if they don't feel rotationally set. So I'm just trying to set the, the starting from six right here and as I'm setting him I feel like it's not going in the right spot. There that time it felt like it popped in a good spot. Back, pulling on five and putting just a bit of pressure on him as I pass pass him. Four. Got a little click from four there. Three. I think I got a click from three, but I think I also overset too. So I'll go back to the back one more time before I let go of tension and I will just try to do the same thing one more time. Just get that nice proper click on six. I feel like that was it. Five. 
top bed, floor. Felt okay there. Felt like it fell back into the right spot. Six fell out of position, but I got a nice click from him. Okay. Three. Let me just check too quickly so I can also make sure to get the right spot of his position. So I don't overset him. Okay, I'm going to check one here. One is really binding. Got a nice click from one. Just feeling for him here. See if he feels okay. Try to find three again here. And there. I got a nice click from three. one binding again okay I got a li little rotation of the core once I set one right there I'm gonna go to the back try to see where I'm hung up right now because I believe everything is set to the shear but not rotated correctly so what I can do is really put on the pressure the tension here and try to feel for which pins feel loose and which feel pins feel tight so that way I can tell the ones that are tight are not rotated properly the ones that are loose are Feel five wasn't rotated properly. I loosened up when I tried to rotate them, but I dropped some pins down there. No problem because we'll just go through them one more time, try to rotate and set them as we do it. Every time I do that, I'm getting a little bit closer to getting this rotation done properly. Okay, click on six. Four. Maybe three. That could have been two, but I feel one is binding here. Got a little click from one again. Oh, one fell down. Got him back. Look in the back here, to see what we might be missing. I believe it's three. Got a click from three, but I also heard something drop down. It was one. Got it, and it opened. So there we go. Just a little bit of working through it in order to make it work, but that's a little persistence and you'll get it open. I'll zoom out a little bit so I don't get anything out of frame. Turn this around here so that way I can use the vise to help me get this C-clip off. And I actually have a harder time removing the C-clip than I do actually picking the lock. So this C-clip, what I found in order to get it off is to, okay, I'm going to lock this lock back up and orient the C-clip like this. And then I can click this here, try to pry it open and get the tension wrench underneath it as I do that. Bear with me here. It's uh, being a little bit difficult on me, but persistence is key. 
starting to bend open a little bit. Loosening up. Sorry about this. Just need to get underneath this little part here, and I can pry it off much more easily. It might be bent enough in order to come off here pretty soon. It's close. Shine. I think you might be close to being able to just come right off. There we go. Whew. Told you that's harder than actually picking the lock. Okay, now I can take this vise out of here. Make sure I have everything in a good spot. Okay. Use the key to get this core rotated. There we go. Follower. That right here. Comes out these. E pins five, oops, five, two, one. Sorry about my weird counting order, but four. That's the order that I'm taking these out in. Three and six. And the sidebar. here little springs in them driver pins one is standard two is standard three is a mushroom four is Mushroom five is standard and six is a mushroom. Get the springs out of here and the anti drill protection. Organize this all nicely for you before I show the camera. Oops. Sorry about the banging noise. Okay. All right, here are our key pins. Um, number four and number six are the spooled key pins. And if you look carefully on these key pins, you will see that they do have the false gates in them. It's just really hard to see because they're uh, very, here's one right there. They're very uh, faint 
This one's a center cut. This one doesn't have one. Um, this one does. It's kind of, again, hard to see. This one does. That one does as well. Anyways, um, you can see here's the sidebar, and those are the notches in which the uh, the they sit inside those key pins right there. And in order to uh, protrude into the plug, they have to rest inside those notches. It all has to line up nicely. The key pins have to be rotated properly for that to happen. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. That's part two of my guide on how to pick Medoco by Axel. If you haven't seen part one, I encourage you to check it out. Have a nice day and take care. Bye.